Okay, here's my first attempt at a review online over the digestive system. This is the pre-PowerPoint review. For the test on Thursday. Things you need to know, like always, you need to know uh, the functions in which the digestive system carries out ingestion, mechanical processing, digestion, secretion, absorption, and excretion. Might be wise to know all the organs in the order in which food travels or the digestive products travel and the functions of those organs and the accessory organs. You need to know the components. Not only the components, but their functions. And this is pretty much the order in which they travel, in which food travels through the system. This is an excellent slide because it gives the overall, the major functions. We will detail in this PowerPoint some of the uh, more detailed parts of these structures uh, but this is a good slide and just understanding the general function of them. I've already studied the histology part so we're going to move on down to some of the other concepts of the digestive system. Here's our plique along with the villi. The villi are the little projections here. The plique are more of the wave-like uh, structures within the system. Two very important terms. Peristalsis propels the material along the track. Segmentation churns it, but I would know this. Peristalsis basically are wave-like contractions, whereas segmentation is more of your regional movements. These slides show how peristalsis pushes food through the digestive tract. Basically, the functions of the oral cavity, I would know that the oral cavity starts the digestion of their starches. That's where it begins with an enzyme called amylase. Not going to get into the anatomy so much of the oral cavity. The functions of the tongue. I, mean, I think this is pretty self explanatory, this slide alone. You're not going to have to label the oral cavity, nor the parts. I would know still that the epiglottis helps block food from entering the trachea, right in this area. Know that there's three pairs of glands, the parotid, the sublingual, and the submandibular. And know the functions of saliva, which I just previously stated, as far as amylase and the digestion of starches. You will not need to label the salivary glands. And you know what I've said about the teeth, so don't worry about anything with the teeth. Functions of the pharynx, notice we're not worried about the nasal or laryngopharynx. The pharynx is the passageway for food entering the esophagus. Know the anatomy of the esophagus, basically 25 centimeters long. And really, that's all you really need to know. The three phases. Don't really need to know these slides. The functions of the stomach. Make sure you know the functions of the stomach. Not only the functions, but the parts of the stomach. As far as the bulge is the fundus, the curved part down below is the pylorus. Okay, the body of the stomach. And, and know that it's a temporary storage place. You really don't see absorption on this slide. There's a reason for that. Although there are certain molecules that can be absorbed through it. The walls of the stomach, I should say. Here are the regions of the stomach. I would know these regions. Inside the stomach is the rugae, and when we go inside the gastric pits, we'll find cells. 
Make sure you understand that the parietal cells produce HCL, an intrinsic factor. The chief cells produce pepsinogen, and that becomes active, and it is called pepsin once it activates with the HCL. So pepsin, the main function here is to digest or begin the digestion of the proteins. So you have the mouth with carbohydrates, the stomach with proteins. And here's our gastric pit. And we get a close-up view of that with our parietal cells and chief cells. Don't worry about the endocrine cells, nor the phases. From the stomach, we move to the small intestine. Make sure you understand all three regions. The jejunum is the major reason, or the, I'm sorry, the major region of absorption. The duodenum is where the pancreas and liver secrete their fluids into. It's more of an area where we adjust the balance of the pH back up to a workable state. And then we move after the jejunum to the ileum which connects with the large intestine through the ileocecal valve. And here are the areas. Here's a picture of the plique. You can't see the villi, but they're on there. If I was to back up and talk about the plique and the villi and the picture, their main function is to increase the surface area of the small intestine. Remember what I said, if you stretch the whole thing out with all the plique and villi, it would cover a tennis court. Another view of it. And again, the small intestine, just think of absorption of most of our nutrients. Most of the digestion takes place in the small intestine. Within the small intestine, most of the absorption takes place in the jejunum. Moving on to the pancreas, really all I'm looking for here are these enzymes. The carbohydrates, lipids, proteins are all digested by these enzymes and they finish up the digestive process. Carbohydrates start in the mouth, but they're cleaned up, so to speak, in the small intestine, as are the proteins and lipids. And that moves us to the liver, which know that it has four lobes. I'm not asking you to know the lobes. We know that it has over 200 functions. The gallbladder is located on the underside of the liver, and it secretes bile. The liver actually secretes it, but the bile stores it. So the functions of the liver are just to break down fats. Basically, bile is going to break down the large molecules of fat. So if you have a lack of bile in your system, you would definitely have trouble digesting fat. Again, not going to study the histology, but just know the liver produces it. And the bile, it produces the bile and the gallbladder stores it. And the three main functions are metabolic regulation. I'm not going to get into the hematological regulation, but the production of bile is an important part right here. That takes us to... the large intestine. Know the functions of the large intestine. It is not necessarily involved with the absorption of the nutrients. Yes, we do absorb some vitamins. Its main function is to reabsorb the water and compact the feces. And it consists of these three parts, the cecum, the colon, and the rectum. Make sure you understand those three parts and their major functions. But basically, they all have the same functions. They have bacteria that lives in the large intestine that helps us make vitamin K. And the rectum is a storage compartment for the feces. 
Also understand the ascending colon, the transcend or the transverse colon, and the descending colon. Then you have the sigmoid colon down here, which leads to the rectum for the storage of the feces. And again, here are the functions of the large intestine, and you see that bacterial growth right here. That's the last thing I talked about on Tuesday. Hopefully this helps you, and be ready for the test. Thursday, right at the start of class.